Good morning. It's early. I'm hungry. The kiddo got up at 6 o'clock this morning. I don't even understand that it's a Sunday, but that's okay because it's breakfast day. I'm going to make um, banana bread. I'm actually going to make two loaves today because I have enough bananas. I have four bananas. This is, I'm going to come over. This is where you want your bananas when you uh, make banana bread. Super delicious. I apologize for the no makeup. Listen, it's early in the morning. I'm not, I, I, I can't get all dolled up just for banana bread. I'll get dolled up when I eat it. How about that? Uh, I'm going to take um, two, two thirds of a cup of butter and melt it down um, so that we can put that into the bananas in just a minute. Whenever I, I know you can't see me and I'm sorry. Um, again, what we're working with is spectacular here. Um, whenever I put it in, uh, in the microwave, I, I want to only do it for just a few seconds because butter splatters, I'm sure you've already figured that out. Um, another little tip for you is that when you buy bananas, if you take some plastic wrap and just put it right on top, I'll show you, right on top of your bananas here. This will actually preserve your bananas for a uh, few extra days. So I've had these for just over a week now. And um, no, I've had them longer than that. I don't even know. I've had them, I've, I think I've had these like a week and a half. Whoops. Uh, yeah, about a week and a half. And they are just now ready to make banana bread out of. I could actually probably give them another day, but I'm not going to do that because tomorrow's Monday and I have to work, and so I don't have the time. So this is why I do this fun stuff on the weekends. Plus, this gives us breakfast in the morning. All right. Whoops. Um, and I don't know if I told you because it's early, but I am making two loaves, not just one. I have the oven preheating right now to 350 degrees. I'm going to throw these away, wash my hands, and get the butter, or check the butter at least. All right, I'm gonna put this butter back in for about 10 seconds. It's almost come to a complete melt, but not entirely. Um, this recipe does call for beaten eggs, so I have two eggs here, and I am just going to beat them, senseless. And you can just do it with a fork, you don't need a whisk, especially when it's in a small dish. Okay. I like to try to get as much of the white beet in as possible. Okay, set that aside. And butter time. All right, there we go. So you can probably see that there's a few chunks of butter in there. It's not quite melted. And the reason that is is because I don't want it to be completely melted. Uh, in the microwave, that way it won't splatter as badly. I'm just gonna stir it up to get the remainder of that butter melted down. And I'm spilling it all over the place. So that's exciting. I'm making a mess. I'm just gonna put it back in. It happens. This time we'll go about seven seconds, and while I wait for that, I'll definitely take a sip of my coffee. Well, that's the first time Saved by the Bell doesn't work. Mmm. I have another banana peel I didn't see. All right, Connor, you want to open that? Ready? One, three, two, three! Good job! Melted butter. You shut it all the way. Shut it all the way. 
Connor thinks it's helpful with the microwave. Do not take that glass plate out of the microwave. Good thing I put it back. Jeez. Okay. So this is ready to go. Again, I keep making a mess. Butter is a messy beast. It's not even butter. It's vegan butter. Which, surprisingly, tastes the exact same as butter. So it doesn't even... Um, phase us at all. Um, okay, I did not see that either. So check your bananas for those little stripey thingies because I have some on there I didn't know about. Uh, at this time, I'm just going to start mashing up the bananas. You want to get it as smooth as possible. And I just do it with a fork, it's very simple. No crazy contraptions needed. In fact, I'm gonna be using a fork the whole time. I'm not even going to grab a whisk or anything else, just a fork. I will grab an off, uh, a rubber spatula at the end just to <clears throat> help it on into the pans, but aside from that, I will just be using a fork. what that is. I'm going to remove it. It does not look appetizing at all. Okay. The bananas are mashed down now. And we are going to go ahead and add our butter at this time. And just kind of stir that or melt that in. Not melt that in. Um, work that in early. I have not had a full cup of coffee yet. So I, am, I am sorry. Goodness gracious, you just, there. All right. This is coming together really nicely. Almost looks, almost looks like a custard. Connor and Joe are playing. Connor's running away from his daddy and thinks it's hilarious. Is it funny to run away from daddy? <clears throat> okay, so the the butter is worked into the bananas, and now I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda. Let's talk baking soda for just a second. So what I have found is that whenever you are adding, add salt next, um, whenever you're adding baking soda to a recipe or to a bread recipe and you get that uh, deflation at the top when you pull it out that's because you're using too much baking soda and I was talking baking soda bicarbonate or sodium bicarbonate not uh, baking powder um, sugar is next I've got uh, one and a half cups of sugar because again two we're making two loaves um, Back to the baking soda. So by reducing it, uh, reducing the amount to half of what the recipe calls for, uh, in this case, if I were to make one loaf, usually the recipe will call for a teaspoon of baking soda. I use a half a teaspoon and then my uh, bread rises really nicely and when it, uh, when it cools, it does not deflate at all. So if you're having that issue, give that a try. Okay, the next ingredients are gonna be our beaten eggs and our vanilla. So we're gonna add this, and this is a super simple recipe. Just a few ingredients, and I like to get everything prepared before I start recording because it just makes everything go by so much more quickly. If you guys had to watch me do all of the ingredients one by one and all the distractions I deal with, I would be here all day. And this bread already takes an hour, so I don't have all day. I have time to go get more coffee and have a seat for just a second. And then come back, okay. Nope, stay. All right, and now for the vanilla. I am using a Mexican vanilla. 
usually the recipes will call for about a teaspoon. I say, and it's vanilla. Vanilla is good. So I will put in sometimes a little extra just because I do enjoy that flavor of fresh vanilla, not the artificial vanilla like in some creamers and things like that. That is not my favorite. So I don't buy those. But when I'm making a recipe, especially bread, especially this kind of bread, banana bread, um, I definitely overdo it just a little. Um, cinnamon is a huge, huge ingredient in my breads. Um, this stuff is just amazing. It gives it a nice spicy flavor. By spicy, I don't mean hot. I just mean um, lift it up, I guess you could call it. I always add it to my flour and just kind of work it into the flour because... I don't know, I just do. I guess so that it's more even throughout the flour or recipe, and the flour is the best place to put that. That's a good answer, I'm gonna go with that. Okay, we're gonna add our flour now, we're just gonna stir in the flour. And with flour, I don't like to dump it all in at once unless it just so happens to be that way. I like it, <laughs> uh, accidents do happen. Uh, I like to just kind of work it in a little at a time. Um, your KitchenAid would tell you the same thing. And you want to make sure that you don't overwork your doughs or anything like, or your batters because things happen, all different things. Sometimes it just doesn't set right and sometimes it does and sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's not. And you know what, we're just not going to take that chance. I like to say I'm not a baker, um, and I don't understand the science behind it, but I do kind of, I mean, to a degree. I, I learn, I, I, I really do educate myself on cooking and baking and less baking than cooking, but when I am interested in baking something, I definitely look into it because I want to understand the fundamentals of that dessert, bread, what have you. So that I don't have accidents like deflating pan or bread, bread loaves and I've had that. So I had to research, you know, why does this happen? What can I do to prevent it? And that's what I found. Lessen your baking soda. Okay, and we're almost done with the flour. And then once this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the pans and the oven is pre, uh, preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna just double check it though. Mine tends to run a little hot and so I may have to turn it down and let it kind of cool a bit before I put this in there. Um, but it'll be all right, we'll get it there. All right, in the last bit here. I think next time I might add cloves and nutmeg and all of the beautiful fall spices for baking, even though it is not fall, it's spring. But you know what? Fall is my favorite time of year. Spring is my second favorite. Um, and I just, you know, I like those fall flavors throughout the year. I might try that next time. My arms get a little tired, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. All right, this bread is coming together really nicely. Um, you wanna make sure ugh, that it's all worked in. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is this, so the the flour is all worked into the batter. However, there is still some on the side that's giving me a whole bunch of grease. So I'm going to take my rubber spatula at this point, if I can find it. Oh, there's so much stuff in here. There it is. And I'm just gonna work it along the sides to work in the remaining, the remaining flour. So 
so we can make sure that we have exactly enough because if you don't know this already, baking is a science. The measurements are there for a reason, not to be deviated from if you don't know the science behind it like myself because if I did, I could probably alter the recipes a little bit more than I do. Uh, what a mess I've made. Okay. The uh, next thing we're going to do is put them in our greased 8x4 bread pans. And I'm just basically going to cut the recipe in half. Here, let me move this a little bit. That's better. I'm going to cut the recipes by half so that one isn't more than the other. And I want to get as much of this batter in as possible. I feel like for as early as it is this morning, I am so much more prepared for this video than I have been for any other video. <laughs> oddly, and... Um... This is a one take wonder, guys. Uh, I just want to kind of roll it around, make it as even as possible. And I might have to uh, take some out of one pan and put it in another. I just want to see where I'm at. You want another? Do these look no. even to you? Yeah. I think that one's got a little bit more. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to take a little bit out of this one, plop it in that one. Okay. Now they match. So I'm going to put them in the oven. Let me check it and make sure. Yeah, see it's at 385 degrees. Let me move this out of the way. This is what I do. I roll around my kitchen for you guys. Hopefully they see it and don't fall. You guys be careful. So I'm just cooling this guy down for a minute. Um, we have 385 degrees. We don't want that at all. We want to make sure that it is at 350 degrees when we put our batter in because we don't want it to overcook or cook too quickly. Hence, overcooking. Mm. Ugh, I got cold on me. Okay. A little bit longer, and we will get these in. But they are ready to go. This looks delicious. Does that not look delicious? Do you just want to eat that batter? I want to eat that batter once it's cooked. almost there so by the time I get these in it'll be at 350 I'm just gonna put this on the middle rack yep there it is 350 for about 55 minutes and then we're gonna check it with a toothpick and make sure it's done if they're not done we'll put it in for another five to ten minutes depending and go from there sometimes I only need two minutes uh, two minutes in addition but you want that toothpick to come out clean. I have found in my trials and tribulations of baking that even the slightest bit of wetness on your toothpick will indicate that your baking is not done um, at all. It's not going to be done. It's not going to continue to cook. So you just, you know what, shove that right back in and continue to cook it for a few minutes and just do it a few minutes at a time so you don't overcook it. We're gonna give this another 54 minutes and then we're gonna take it out to cool after we check it, of course. The timer just went off and I just took these out to check them. Um, I want to insert a toothpick into the center all the way down and pull it out. Now that is a clean toothpick, nothing on it. So these are done, or at least that one is. Let's check this one. Yeah, these are completely done. 
and I'm hoping that they're soft and tender on the inside, not overdone. I don't think that they are, but I always worry about that kind of stuff because I want all my food to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, well then it's all for naught. Okay, so these are just going to sit here. Let me turn this off. Um, these are just going to sit here and completely cool. I do not want these to break, so I'm not going to remove them from the pans until they're done um, cooling completely. So I have them on a cooling rack so that the air can circulate underneath as well as on top, and it can cool the entire loaf rather than just the top of the loaf. And so once that is done and it's completely cool, we'll remove them from the pans and we will pans and we'll uh, get to cutting them. Okay, so in the meantime, while this has been cooling, I went ahead and got myself all dolled up, decorated my face. I hope I no longer scare you guys. Uh, real quick, whenever, I'm going to just do this with a butter knife. It'll be a lot easier. Um, I'm going to kind of loosen this up with a butter knife a little bit on the sides just so that it doesn't, uh, if it is sticking, which it shouldn't be because we greased it, it'll come out in one fell swoop and not throw a fit about you wanting it to come out. This bread still smells so good even though it's already cooled and my family is dying to eat it. Um, they keep asking me, is it done yet? Is it done yet? And I'm like, it's not done yet. It'll be done when you have a piece on the plate. You know what I mean? And give me a break. Okay. This is the finished product. You notice how the top did not deflate of on either, bre uh, either bread. It looks absolutely amazing. It's moist. I can feel it. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. Forgive the crumbs. That's what happens when you dump the pan over. Um, so now I just want to give this a quick taste. Oh, the, crisp, the crust is crispy. Normally I put bread, uh, butter on this, but for right now, I'm not going to do that. I just want to taste it as is. Just to make sure it's still moist, um, I always get concerned when I bake that it's overcooked or undercooked. And so, you know, I'm still learning the baking process. I'm a cook, not a baker. So we'll see. Usually I do pretty well with, with quick breads, but we'll see. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's it right there. Yeah. You guys need to make this. This is so good. So good. All right. I won't take another bite because I know they're ready to eat. Um, you guys, it, it, it is a process. I'm not going to lie. Um, making it or putting it together isn't the issue. It's the baking for an hour, cooling for about another hour and a half <clears throat> before you cut it. So if you wanted to have this on a, on a weekday or, excuse me, a week or well, weekday or weekend for breakfast, you don't want to spend the time waiting for it, just make it ahead. Um, make it on a Saturday, have it on a Sunday morning. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting a few hours. But that's okay because, you know what? It's totally worth it. The flavor of um, those bananas, I can taste those bananas. They're beautiful. That cinnamon is awesome. And just everything about it. It's moist. It's delicious. I'm ready to warm some up because that's how I like my bread. Warm with a little bit of butter on it. I'm um, going to make some for the family, and we're going to have breakfast. Thanks, you guys, for joining. I really hope that you're going to try this recipe. Um, I don't believe I said it out loud earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, <clears throat> um, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't believe I said it earlier, but because I made two loaves, I did three cups of flour normally in one loaf. It's a one and a half cups, obviously. And about a tablespoon of cinnamon, only because, again, two loaves. Otherwise, I would do about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, depending on how I'm feeling that morning. Um, for me, the more the merrier. However, sometimes that can get a little overbearing. So just do about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half, and that should be safe. Um, one egg, if it's one loaf, uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar, a pinch of salt, a half a teaspoon, half teaspoon. 
baking soda. It will not deflate. I use about a, uh, well, I use more than a teaspoon of vanilla, but normally I would use about a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. And if you're just doing one, you can use uh, two bananas. If you're doing two loaves, four bananas. I think that's it. If I forgot anything, hit me up in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions or uh, correct any errors I made. You guys have a wonderful day. I hope you like this video. Just hit like right down there. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe so you get the most up-to-date content. I will be posting a lot here soon because I'm just really into this. So come back, you guys. I'm really excited. See ya. Bye.